Okay, how about Katie, what do you think? Should we get started? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, um, and maybe we'll even uh, uh, end early if no one has questions. This is a very thorough presentation that is actually possible. <laughs> uh, right. But there are a lot of slides, so we should go ahead and get started. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> Um, so we'll start with some introductions. Um, so this is a fancy picture of me. <laughs> I'm Katie Johnson, the uh, director of Bridgeway Capital's Creative Business Accelerator. Um, I like to say that this is the face behind all the emails because as an administrator, um, I send a lot of emails out and that's how people tend to know me, but I'm a real person. Um, and this is a little bit about me. Um, I've actually owned businesses as well, um, like many of you, <laughs> which is why you're here. Um, I had a, a pottery company when I was in my 20s, actually, and I made tableware. And then I actually also uh, was the director of a tile making project um, as a part of a nonprofit that had a lot of earned income. It was sort of operated like a business. Um, but I'm still a practicing artist and working on putting a studio in my garage as we speak. It's very exciting. Uh, my background is in ceramics. Um, and I also am an arts administrator. So I get to design and lead a lot of programming for uh, Bridgeway Capital. And that's programs like First Sleep and Next Sleep. Uh, we also have an Erie based program called Erie Made, and then our new program, uh, Acre, which is the Alliance for Creative Rural Economies, which is a big statewide program, or I say Western Pennsylvania uh, specific program, as well as Northern West Virginia. So it's a big, big area. And I do business coaching and consulting. Specifically, right now, um, I'm pretty excited that I've been working with the American Craft Council on programming as well, and I do that as a consultant. That's been really fun. And I also just help artists get uh, loans. It's a big part of what I do. Um, I work at a CDFI, which there's a, we'll talk a little bit about, but we help um, people who tend to not have access to capital, go ahead and get that capital so that they can have more resilient businesses. So that's really a big part of who I am and what I do. Next slide. You're muted. There. There you go. Sorry. This I think when my computer has um Zoom and everything, things just get a little slightly delayed. But hello everybody. My name is Anya Leman, Innovation Director at Ascender. I'm really excited to be here today and to be partnering with uh, Katie and Bridgeway Capital and CBA overall. Uh, we have been here for a few years, so we're really excited about this partnership. At Ascender, my role is to design and execute free educational programming for entrepreneurs here in Pittsburgh. We touch about 500 to 700 and plus entrepreneurs. We have multiple programs, so you, you should check us out. But one of the things that we look uh, forward the most is also uh, partnerships and, and being able to, to partner with Bridgeway Capital uh, and help creative entrepreneurs uh, through Next Sleep. I let my colleague Ben uh, introduce himself here. Hi everyone, my name is Ben and I'm the program coordinator at Ascender. So I work closely with Anya to develop those programs, um, both for our incubator program where we work closely with 10 companies each year and larger programs where we work with the general public or specialty groups like creative businesses. Uh, like Katie, I send a lot of emails too. So if you were to be accepted into the Next Leap program, you would definitely be getting uh, numerous emails from me too. Nice, nice <laughs> meeting everyone tonight. I'd like to call them helpful reminders as well. And the other person in uh, um, the slide is Nandile Nunez, our executive director. You will be hearing from her uh, in session five of Next Leap. She will be your main um, coach facilitator for, uh, for presentation training. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. All right, and, um, and I just quickly wanted to also introduce the ex extended part of our team. Um, through Next Leap, you will be connected with experts who um, have been handpicked by, um, by Ascender just to make, and Bridgeway Capital to make sure that, um, that you can get a, the right foundation to make the Next Leap. 
So next leap is definitely growth oriented. So we have picked coaches who are um, whose expertise are all in finance and also business modeling, pricing modeling, to really make sure to take care of those technical pieces that you need to understand in order to one, identify the growth strategies and the direction that you want to take. Uh, and then also, how do you execute it? What does that look like? How do you measure success? So we have Tammy Sujarto, uh, founder and uh, founder of Project Scale-Up, and also um, our business coach, Alessandra, who works closely with our 10 incubator companies. Um, and um, she's uh, she has worked in bank in banking and financial, um, also other financial institutions. So she will be here working with you as a coach. We'll have Phil Marsov. He's the chief commercial decision officer at Arieka, but also a business consultant. Um, he has worked uh, with many hundreds of entrepreneurs here in Pittsburgh and is now located out of Arizona, but will be helping us out with Next Sleep. Also, his expertise is strategy, business modeling, and finance. We have Nadile Nunez, as I suggested in the previous slide, who will be helping with um, presentation and storytelling. And then we are happy to welcome Jessica Wilson Graves, founder of Una Biologicals. I recommend that you also stop by her store in Lawrenceville. And she will be your um, entrepreneur facilitator for the off weeks um, of the sessions, which I will cover in a little bit too. Great, thank you. So one more slide for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one more slide. And, uh, and overall, I just wanted to uh, share a little bit more about Ascender. Again, we are located in East Liberty. We are a nonprofit organization, um, a hub for innovation and for entrepreneurs. Uh, we are here to help you start businesses, scale them, uh, and also help you along the way. We want to make sure that all entrepreneurs in Pittsburgh, including creative businesses, get su the support that they need. Uh, so, you know, Next Leap is one way that we also show that support. So to learn more about us, just you know, uh, check out our website and we'll be sharing a little bit more information as we get to work with the final seven companies that come in. All right. Awesome. All right. Um, so, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what the Creative Business Accelerator is, um, in part, and just like a sender, because this uh, program, Next Leap, is just a part of what we do. So both organizations, it's why a sender and Bridgeway are partnering, is that we're both invested in supporting entrepreneurs, and we do a lot of things. So it's kind of helpful to tell you a little bit, a bit more about that and provide some context. Um, next slide. Um, so the Creative Business Accelerator is um, actually one program of numerous programs at um, Bridgeway Capital. Uh, and Bridgeway Capital is a special type of nonprofit that a lot of people don't know about actually. It's a, called a CDFI or Community Development uh, Financial Institution. And CDFIs are super interesting, actually. If you're a curious person, I would highly recommend Googling them because in the world of nonprofits, we're actually pretty new. We really came about uh, technically in the late 80s and the early 90s. And um, we started off actually as nuns investing, taking their retirement funds and pulling them together to uh, support community projects. And then that sort of evolved into this long story, but in a whole new type of nonprofit came. And it was really to fight uh, injustices in lending, including redlining and other racist practices um, that were uh, preventing historically marginalized people to access capital. So that's a, that's a little bit of the root of why CDFI exists. And the organization where I work is one of them. And really the nuts and bolts of what we do is, uh, we call ourselves a nonprofit social impact investor. And what that means is we provide loans for historically marginalized people and or um, nonprofits or community development projects. So it's actually really broad. And that can include veterans, people located in low to moderate income areas. So both urban and rural, uh, women owned businesses or women identified owned businesses, BIPOC owned businesses, or folks looking to fund projects in historically disinvested communities. So it's very broad. So basically, if somebody is trying to make the world better, we will try to fund it. That's really where we're at. Um, 
the, the area that I'm in, the creative business accelerator is providing loans for artists, makers and designers and other folks in the creative economy. Um, and that's sort of the lane that I'm in, but we actually have a bunch of other programs doing really interesting things for other sectors. Um, we have our new program called BID that I'll call out that's super interesting. And that stands for um, Building Inclusive Development. And it's a program for just black contractors and developers in Pittsburgh and in Erie who um, want to work in Homewood and Wilkinsburg and other historically disinvested communities to uh, help people buy their own buildings and then hire um, people of color to work on those buildings and then help their businesses. So we do a lot of different things. So just a little bit of context. Um, at the CBA, we have a really large footprint. It's actually 17 counties. And we have about a thousand regional creative businesses and partners that are in our network. So our reach is pretty high. And one of the benefits of working with the CBA and being in our programs is that you get visibility um, by being a part of our communication. So e-blasts and social media and all the ways that we promote businesses and talk about them, um, that we, we reach a really wide variety of community members and stakeholders. Um, and the nuts and bolts of what we do is out of all of those businesses, we create cohorts in different programs like Erie Made, First Leap, and Next Leap, where we identify business owners in the creative field who are really interested in um, strengthening their businesses, creating more resilient businesses, and also having social and economic impact. So that means like hiring, uh, contributing to the, to the local economy in some way, activating uh, maybe like vacant, long vacant commercial spaces for businesses, all of those things that make our community stronger. Um, we're, we're really creating these intense cohorts like Next Leap to bring people together and support those outcomes. Next slide. So I just want to call out a little bit. Um, one of the fundamental things that we do is we're really trying to transcend the stereotype of the starving artist and that mentality and I really want to say up right that Next Leap and First Leap, but we'll call it Next Leap, is a is a program that is trying to deprogram artists, makers, and designers from considering the this identity of the starving artist as being sort of successful and authentic. And then instead, we want to help people understand that the starving artist is very outdated. Um, it leverages a lot of privilege in order to sort of operate without actually having income and um, having a sustainable business practice. And it really equates success with failure. And I use this example um, as a, I, as a, uh, uh, this, this painting here as an example, because we're looking at an artist that was supported his entire life by his family and um, was celebrated posthumously never really sold very many paintings and but like now we hold this up as this ideal of this very successful artist but when you actually look at it there's not a lot of success there he never enjoyed it and so we really want to start rethinking that sense of identity for artists will you please move to the next slide and so while i love vincent van gogh let's go ahead and transcend those stereotypes and start thinking about how you can still have creative fulfillment be a high priority for you, but you can also find financial resiliency and know that you can sell out without selling out. You're not a raging capitalist. And this program is really going to focus on uh, the finances and thinking about how to build projections and make really um, educated sort of decisions about your business, looking at the numbers. But we can also talk about how your business can make meaningful change and make a real impact in your community. Um, and so that might be through having a storefront and having events, or that might be hiring people and giving them their first job. There's all kinds of things that you can do. But at the end of the day, you can also still make a living wage. And so we're really here to talk about those things. And I just want to say that that's why our programs exist. And that's what we're really here to do. Next slide, please. So just really briefly, um, I want to provide like just sort of telescope out for a minute and talk broadly about what we do at the CBA. All of these elements will be addressed some in some way in Next Leap. But we um, have sort of honed into six elements that we feel every creative business owner has to address in some shape or form in order to be successful. And so 
peers is the first one at the top because we cannot operate our businesses in a silo. We need each other. Um, and that's why we create cohorts because we want to create opportunities for people to um, connect and to, to lean on each other. And I will say with great pride that I know the first cohort from Next Leap here still is connected, still works together and they meet, uh, not all of them, but a core group of them still meet at least once a month or once every two months, depending on the season to talk about their businesses and talk about finances. And that is community building. And it's really, really important. Um, we also help people hire and create jobs. As a CDFI, that's just a very key outcome for us. And oftentimes when we're talking about scaling businesses, this is, a, this is something that is sort of inevitable because as your business grows, you can't wear all your hats. And markets. Um, and so that's something that we'll talk about as well as, um, as the program unfolds and understanding your needs as a business. We um, sometimes help provide access to markets, like through sponsorships for the Handmade Arcade, for people to reach new, new people. Um, we will promote businesses, we'll do sort of a lot. So we can have conversations about helping to remove barriers for people to access markets. There might be a trade show. There's just many different business models that we support and work with and would love to have that conversation. And then where you're operating your business space is essential. We own and operate um, a light industrial building in Homewood um, it's called 7800 Susquehanna. And we, um, we provide a lot of space for small businesses to uh, manufacture whatever they make um, and actually have space available. And we would love to fill that with creative businesses. Um, and so that's also something that we can talk about if you're interested in. We offer guidance, of course, like Next Leap. And then we offer capital. And I would say, I just want to share that when I was a business owner, I was very debt averse and would never have considered a loan. And now, um, many years later, over a decade later, everything that I understand now about capital and about growing a business, I can say that with all honesty, anybody who's growing your business will need capital at some point. The question is more about what form that'll take, whether it's crowdfunding, whether it's a loan, whatever it is. And my job is to help prepare people for that moment. Um, next slide. So let's talk a little bit about what Next Leap is. Um, it is an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial readiness program for established creative businesses. So I just really want to emphasize that because we do a lot of things for businesses that are in about that like early stage or, um, you know, one to three years. But we're really um, looking for businesses that have operations of at least three years minimum. Um, the next leap is for people who are operating a business and are really they want to go deeper. Um, and we really care about growth, of course, we're talking about scaling businesses, but we also care deeply about stabilizing businesses and helping them be more resilient. So we really wanna look under the hood, help you look under the hood and understand where are your weaknesses, where are your strengths, you know, and that might be your, that might be your bookkeeping, you know, and you've been sort of hiding that and saying, oh, you know, manana and, and next sleep is that moment where you pause and say, I'm going to, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to get this right. Um, we have an application process and we'll choose up to seven creative businesses for this intensive 10 week program. Next slide. So um, high level, the activities for the program um, include uh, understanding that your financial health, I've sort of talked a little bit about that. And that's in part because Tammy, the, the finances coach is a wizard. And one of the things that I have heard from past, uh, past Next Sleep uh, participants is that they actually wished that their finances were more together when they talked to Tammy because she's such a treasure trove of information. So I wanna emphasize that this is a really, really good point to sit down with an expert and really look at your numbers and learn how to extrapolate information from them, develop reports or develop an understanding so that you can make decisions as an entrepreneur that's based in, in fact and in numbers. Um, it's a financial modeling and, and all those conversations sounds really scary, but when you know how to do it and then you can start making decisions based on it, it is an extremely empowering experience. We'll also do a SWOT analysis. Um, 
strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for those of you that I don't know. Uh, and it's okay if you don't know, you'll learn and then you'll do one. Um, this is a tried and true model um, for understanding a business and uh, it's extremely effective. You, you sort of grid it out and say, okay, what am I doing well? That's really fun to look at. And then what am I not doing so well? And they're gonna scan the environment and say, who else is doing this actually? You know, what is, uh, what is the other businesses in my field or are there businesses showing up? Are my prices like theirs? I mean, you're gonna ask all those questions and we're gonna have coaches to guide you to do that. And then once you have that information, you're going to assess your needs and then you're going to start developing strategies and plans based on all the information that you've culled. And um, you'll do that with a cohort of uh, like businesses. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the structure, but we'll say just briefly that you'll have opportunities to meet in person and work one on one and really dig deep. And there is like a vulnerability there. We, we, we will talk about your finances, for instance, or other weaknesses. And in that vulnerability, though, relationships grow. And um, I would really, you know, encourage you all to sort of embrace that opportunity because it's rare and we're sort of making this safe space. And that some really great lasting connections and friendships can come out of this experience. And then lastly, we will have a graduation and it's actually really fun. <laughs> and we, you'll summarize everything and we're, you're not really creating a business plan so much as sort of a summary. And we'll do a really quick sort of pitch about what your next leap is and what you gathered and learned during the program. And then we'll just have a party and we'll invite your friends and family. Um, and it's, it's really fun. Next slide, please. So um, just uh, again, sort of high level, but um, I wanna emphasize that the program is both virtual and in-person hybrid. And the, uh, the key in-person moments are actually the orientation. So we'll all get together and meet in person first, then the graduation at the end. And then in the middle, there's a couple, there's two study sessions that are not required, um, but they are a, a free block of time um, at the same day and time of the week that the sessions normally are held virtually, um, where you all are welcome to come to 7800 Susquehanna, our business center, and meet with Jess Graves, who is the owner of Una Biologicals and a very experienced um, business owner and mentor. And she, I just want to share that she's a really interesting person on a lot of levels, but one of them is that she's been in business for a long time and has a lot of experience, but she's also been a student of business and has been through a lot of programs and really has a language and ability to, um, to analyze businesses and talk both from experiential and sort of a place of heart, but also from a place of mind as a sort of a student of business. And so Jess was chosen on purpose with a lot of intention for this role and having sort of free unfettered access to Jess and to pick her brain is a um, really significant opportunity. So I really would encourage people to um, take us up on that. And then um, we will have, yeah, a graduation at the end. So there's two sort of uh, really important in-person moments that are bookends in the beginning and the end. And then ones that are volunteer based in the middle to study and then the rest is virtual as well as your coaching hours will be virtual and you will have every person here you'll have your your session time as a cohort virtually and then you'll also schedule coaching sessions with the person that that led the week before so that you get one-on-one -on -one time to really process that information with them next slide Um, is it, are these still my slides? Am I, am I talking over you, Anya? Am I good? Okay. You, you can keep going. So now we want to, um, sort of like talk a little bit about the phase one and phase two of next leap. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't stealing your thunder by talking over the slides that you, okay, great. So, um, the way that we framed next leap is sort of like a phase one, which is the curriculum and the intensive, and then sort of a follow-up phase. 
one of the reasons our programs have been pretty successful is that we don't want people to just graduate and we never hear from them again. We, we really want to build supportive, lasting relationships with people. Um, so anyways, this is the first phase, the build the plan phase. And this is really that entrepreneurship curriculum that we were talking about. So, and we'll actually go over in detail all the sessions and Anya will talk about that. That's, I know that's in their slide. Um, but, you know, like I said, we'll talk about SWOT analysis, understanding your financials, all, all of those aspects. And then we'll also really start um, helping you define some goals uh, based on all that, that information. Next slide. And there's also a pretty significant coaching um, uh, dynamic as well. Uh, and this one, so please anticipate it. Uh, sometimes when people get into the program, they get a little overwhelmed with the coaching. And so um, I would say if you want to be in next week, please plan for that. Or it, this is an intensive program. So you will be in a session uh, for two hours with everybody else learning, and then you will get uh, up to two hours of coaching time uh, as well. And uh, and to please use it. It's it's just so so invaluable. And just please plan for that. And then you will have homework as well. So um, that will be, you know, working on your own spreadsheets or doing whatever research um, that's required. So this is this is a free program, um, but the cost is your time, um, which it which could be between five to eight hours a week, depending on how gung-ho you are um, about it, but I would anticipate at least five. Uh, next slide. And then, um, yeah, and then we have these meetups with Jess that I had talked about. Um, the, and we have another slide with all the dates too, but this is good to know. Uh, June 28th and June, uh, July 19th at the um, Business Center at 7800. When you are in the program, we actually send calendar holds for all of this too, so that when you're accepted, we'll send a bunch of stuff out so that it's just booked on your own calendar. And then you can project manage it however you want. Um, we don't expect you to sort of have us all in your head. Um, we'll send all that to you as well as all the information about accessing the space and all those things. I will say that a sender is extremely organized and really, really good <laughs> about communicating all of that. So, um, and yeah, the the uh, meetups are, I think, really important, and I would um, encourage people to plan to attend those. Next slide. So I talked a little bit about Jess. This is a, a lot of text, um, and I won't read it all to you, but what I want to say is that um, Jess has built a national brand uh, that's based here in Pittsburgh and um, has been really full bore with the business for about 15 years. Um, Jess also occupies a pretty large production space in our building at 7800 Susquehanna, as well as has retail spaces, including a pretty popular one in Lawrenceville, but also has um, a lot of wholesale relationships and sells nationally. Um, Jess also has um, been through a ton of really, um, significant uh, entrepreneurial programs, including um, Goldman Sachs 10,000 Businesses, which is like a really sub big deal to be in. Um, and so is a sort of an, not, she's very humble. So she would never say that she is like an expert in business or anything like that, but just really has done the, the thing where she did start in her kitchen and grew something that uh, is, has, uh, I think she has 10 employees now um, and is 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 a pretty um, substantial business. And so she's great. She's also just really, really nice and fun. So good person to spend time with. Next slide. Yep. So um, we will offer continued support um, for any business that we work with. Uh, meaning my virtual door is always open and you can email me and say, I need to hire someone and I have no idea how to do that. Or I'm looking for a production space. Do you know of anything? I'm, I'm here for all of that. But people that are in our programs get um, an extra layer of support. So we'll check in with you to see if you, what you need. I will provide coaching and consultations for anybody in our 
programs, which is not available to people that are not in our programs. If you remember, we have a reach of about a thousand businesses and I don't schedule coaching and consultations with a thousand people. I do it with the folks that are in our cohorts. Um, and if I don't have the answer to somebody or to something, I tend to know somebody who does. Um, that's actually kind of my job is to not be an expert so much, but to be a hub for people who are. So having access to that can be very helpful, especially as you are starting to work through that plan that you developed in Next Sleep and you're coming up against uh, questions or barriers, you're not just left hanging. And I see Anya, you unmuted. Do you have a, do you want to add to that? Just, just getting ready. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I would also, and, and, you know, I want to actually, this is what I thought you were going to do. So I want to also plug that Ascender um, is not only a partner for really next leap, but I would say Ascender is our partner in the ecosystem generally. And so for those of you who are looking for other resources or networking or co-working spaces or to hold an event, Ascender is also going to be there for you. Uh, a really good example of this is um, we had a business, uh, Natural Beauty Supply, that was in Next Leap last year, who really loved working with Ascender, and they had a anniversary party. It was like five years of business, I want to say, and they held that at Ascender. They rented the space. They had a bunch of people there. It was like a, it was a big deal, and so we're really here to be in community with you. And so that's really what the slide is about. Like we'll help you with your plan, and we're just here. We're here to help after you graduate. Yeah, and just to add to that, Katie. Also, at the same time that Lashisha went through Next Sleep last year, she also started our incubator program mm -hmm. here at Ascender, which is a one-year-long incubator program. And uh, Lashisha disclosed, "Hey, I want to have." Both opportunities, I think they, you know, really complement each other in different ways. Um, you know, would love to be considered for both, and we said yes. So it was really, you know, a way like, okay, in next sleep, uh, Leticia will take care of a lot of the finances, and then, you know, once once she was ready to graduate, then we will take care of, you know, other business strategies and things like that. So it's just like yeah. a really great support that um, that we have here in Pittsburgh as well. It's like a really, we're lucky to to be here in this moment. That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Katie. So I'm gonna take it away and really talk a little bit more about the core, um, the sessions and sort of like how that structure looks like. So on a bird's eye view session, you know, we'll have orientation again in person and also presentation and graduation, um, both in person at the beginning and at the end. And then in the middle, we have uh, virtual sessions and then the in-person meetups with the entrepreneurs. So uh, during orientation, what, what we aim to do is to really start that connection and start, start that community building. Um, I really love what Katie said in regards to, you know, entrepreneurs really need each other. The more we learn about them, the more we see that folks do feel sometimes lonely or they feel like maybe their problems are only, you know, their own. But then as they start, you know, being in community, as they start getting to know each other, they really understand that everybody goes through goes through similar things. So they're able to like help each other out and maybe recommend, I don't know, maybe a C, um, CPA or a contractor or, or even exchange information about interns, right? We see a lot of our entrepreneurs who are, hey, I work with this person and uh, this person was great. I cannot have them right now, but maybe you can have them, you can have a position open for them as interns. So there are many, many pluses to, to really get to know each other. But during orientation, uh, we're gonna ask everybody, you know, we're gonna ask everybody to introduce themselves utilizing a template of a one minute elevator pitch. We're, we're, this is just one exercise to get to know you a little bit more, get to know your business, uh, and then and for you to share and ask that maybe, you know, maybe you have a vending event coming up. So that's something that you can invite folks to, to come to. Uh, we, for the folks that we bring into Next Sleep, we will prep them, of course, ahead of time with templates and examples, everything you need in order to feel confident uh, when you come in during orientation. Uh, and here we'll also take some time to, to go through all of the tools. Uh, ben here, um, my colleague, designs uh, the homepage. And you're gonna have a homepage that's gonna tell you, here are all of the things that you need to know about Next Sleep, how to schedule your uh, coaching time with your coaches, um, you know, any more resources that we can provide, we will add it there. And we will also have access to um, Slack, a digital tool for us to collaborate and communicate during off session uh, time. 
during orientation, what you can expect is, you know, this is where all of the learnings are coming together. You're going to get to show off, you know, any, any new strategies, pivots, um, uh, really what your plan of action is. And you're going to get to summarize it in a five minute presentation in front of family, friends, and uh, the Bridgeway Capital team and Ascender. So we're really looking forward to, to party with you during orientation at the end of the program. All right. So a little bit more about the sessions themselves and, and Katie did a really great job, you know, already sharing about the SWOT analysis, but for week one and two, what we're trying to do is, okay, what do we have in place right now? How do, how do we, how can we make sure that we understand what are your strengths? What are your opportunities? What are some threats um, and some weaknesses so that as we you know, work together and you work with your coaches and the facilitator, uh, you can really you know, have very specific asks, specific questions, and we can address those as we go in the next uh, 10 weeks. We really want to understand you know, who are your customers and if maybe going national is a goal that you have you know, a few years from now, understanding what might be other customers that you don't currently reach right now, who are they, what are those markets, we can help you understand that, we can help you make a plan in regards to you know, if going beyond Pittsburgh is a goal of yours or not, then we can just try to figure out where are you, um, what are those strengths and really focusing on the opportunities. The opportunities are, are, is what is gonna inform us into what the growth strategies are gonna look like later on. For week three and four, um, here is where we you know, tr start trying to narrow down what are we going to tackle during the, the 10 weeks. Uh, and this is your growth opportunities, but also then understanding, you know, this is the part where you go really under the hood, understanding, okay, what are your costs? Uh, what are your prices? What, what strategies do you have right now? If maybe hiring someone um, at the end of the program and in, over the next six months is a goal of yours, how do you do that? When can you do it? You know, are you breaking even or not? There are some business metrics metrics that make um, that help you make data driven decisions, uh, and we want to make sure that you feel confident with them, and that you have a list of things, and that you have. Um, and undivided attention from your coaches to go through all of these business metrics and growth strategies that you will need. Um, later in uh, week five, uh, it's all about bringing together this plan. So we will ask you to put it all together in an executive summary to just figure out, okay, what, you know, identify your pivots, identify your strategy. Uh, how, do you, how do you refine uh, your value proposition? What did you learn and where are you going? So this is you know, how we summarize and bring everything together. We will have a presentation training with, that will expose you to more storytelling story skills, uh, maybe some practice some sales pitches as well. Uh, you know, things that could make you just confident about articulating you know, your business, your products, and where are you heading next? Uh, and then all of this is going to come together on a five minute presentation uh, where you get, and this presentation will include your discoveries, pivots, plans, and, um, and where you're heading. And uh, on week six, this is where we come back again in person to, uh, to present and also to celebrate your wins and takeaways. Um, I also wanted to, and we will be sharing this presentation as well so that you can have it, so that you can just take some time to, to look through it. Uh, I wanted to make sure, I'm a visual person, so I wanted to make sure to also send uh, this table to you. Again, just like thinking about, you know, how the program really is structured in person, virtual, and then in person coming in again. Um, so this is sort of like what June looks like, um, orientation on June 7th and then session one and two virtual and then the study week on June 28th. Then for July, we um, right, right away on July 5th, we have a um, 5th to, to 12th uh, session, three to four um, virtually. And then we come back and meet again on, on the entrepreneur meetup. Uh, and then on July 26th is our presentation training. In August, how that looks like is we have a week on your own kind of a little break, but also study week where you can catch up. And, you know, on the, just wanted to mention again that um, you will have time to, to do, to schedule your coaching times in between the sessions, especially during the study week. So uh, for the folks that do come in into the program, we'll let you know exactly, 
you know, what are some ways to organize your time so that you can utilize your coaching hours with the two, with the three coaches that we have. So for our August, you will have two weeks. Um, the week of the 7th to the 11th is presentation practice, and this will happen in uh, virtually. So this is a way for, for you to do a run through of, of a presentation uh, and then just start getting ready to present and feel confident about it and about, you know, how your presentation will look like. Uh, then August 16 is our last session in, in and will be in person. And then on August 21st and on is when our next leap phase two start, uh, phase two starts. Let's see. So Katie, do you wanna tell us a little bit more about program eligibility and, uh, and who's priority? Yeah. So um, program eligibility is um, probably, there's no surprises here. It's probably gonna be relatively um, straightforward for most of you. So uh, we have a really broad definition of, of what constitutes a creative entrepreneur. Um, we have leaned on the PA Council on the Arts um, definition of a creative entrepreneur, creative business, in part because we um, have so closely partnered with them on grants and, and things so that we support creative businesses that are then uh, supported by the, the council, there's a lot of alignment there for funding, but it's very broad. We've had um, landscape architects in our program, um, also just regular architects <laughs> as in buildings, um, design. So uh, if you are a designer, but you, so you, your product is um, either the designs that you produce or you have services, that is fine. Um, and if you have any questions about whether or not you would be eligible, just email me and let me know. We draw the line with um, food services. So if you are a baker, um, then we aren't a good program for you. And, but there are other really great programs for you. But again, um, tea is fine. So there's a, there's a lot of room there. So just let me know if you have questions about it. Um, but Generally, if you if artists, if you identify as an artist or a maker, craftsperson or designer, you're probably eligible. Um, we are looking for more um, uh, businesses that are further along and more established. So you're looking for a minimum of three years of operation. And uh, you need to be located in Western Pennsylvania or Northern West Virginia. Um, and if you are a little far from Pittsburgh, let's talk about the traveling and expectations around that. Um, for uh, we would rather have the right fit for the cohort than just say no. So we'll have a conversation. Um, and please have access to a computer and the internet. So this is to join virtual meetings and to complete the homework. If this is a substantial barrier, please contact me. Um, as you can tell, there's a theme is if you have questions, just please reach out. Uh, don't exclude yourself because you see something on this list and you say, ah, not for me. The reason that we say computer and internet is because this is a virtual um, program, a hybrid, um, but has virtual elements to it. And there is also homework. And so um, accessing um, those tools will be important. And I'm also going to say something too. So um, also being like having the time and ability to be present when you are um, joining via Zoom. Um, so and, and digital tools can kind of relate to that. I, have, I had a program earlier this year where someone um, had said that they can join the program and that everything was fine and they had access, but they were on their phone on the bus during the program, which is technically having access to the internet and joining but they weren't able to join in any conversation because when they unmuted, it was really loud and like out and they can't really see the screen. And that really got me thinking about what we're talking about here. So it, it's not a technicality. We're really looking for people to have a quiet, thoughtful space to take in the, the deluge of information that this program offers. So that's what I mean by eligibility. Um, Aspires to become a full-time creative business owner is very important to us. Um, we, uh, there are a lot of hobbyists and that is a great word. I love hobbyists out there, but we are really looking for people that are genuinely um, looking to have a full-time business. Um, able to attend the sessions, 
uh, we're very serious about that too. I would say that if you have a, a, um, a trip planned for part of this program, um, this is probably not the best time if you're not able to join virtually. So uh, contact me again about that, but it is, this is a program that is intense and it is very hard to catch up. Um, and so we really want people to attend every session. And I, I, I'm, I'm a very flexible person. I tend to be a little inflexible about this because we get a lot of applicants and a lot of people want to be in the program. And if you're not able to attend and really be present, then it's just probably not a good time for you. So let's have that conversation. Um, and we do have pre and post surveys that we ask people to take. This is because we're a nonprofit and we um, have developed tools to actually measure a business's state. So their growth stage. Um, and we ask people to take that before the program and then after, uh, ways after like six months. And we can actually show the delta, like show the ways that we've moved the needle. Um, and then we also do a program survey where we ask you your opinions and your insights, and we really use that feedback uh, to improve our programs. We take that very, very seriously. So we ask that people take that seriously for us as well. Um, and that's about it. Um, so I've talked about our priorities before as a nonprofit, um, but our priorities are in line with, um, for the program, are in line with our priorities as an organization. So um, we uh, prioritize serving underserved communities, including um, BIPOC entrepreneurs, women, veterans, um, folks located in low to moderate income areas. Um, we do also prioritize entrepreneurs who are seeking a loan from Bridgeway. You never have to borrow from us ever. So that's not a requirement for the program. The reason we prioritize it for the program is that if somebody is borrowing money from us and they're seeking technical assistance to have a more resilient business, those two things go really well together. So we will uh, prioritize their access to our programs to make sure that they um, feel really comfortable paying back that loan. So it's, it's kind of a natural combination, but we do not um, ask that anybody in our program ever borrow from us. And we're looking for that social impact. And so um, we'll ask you about this um, in the application, but we're interested, like, do you have goals around creating jobs or um, activating spaces like commercial spaces or others? Especially we talk about post-industrial spaces in particular because we are in the Rust Belt and um, we are trying to uh, create economic development opportunities by activating spaces. Sometimes that's buying that building you've been eyeing for years and renovating it and turning it into a studio. Um, we love that. We want to talk about that. Um, okay, I think that that covers it. Is this you, Anya? Uh, no, this is just, you know, if there are any sort of like any more points in regards to, so there is a two-step application process, uh, and the first step, you know, it's just sort of like basic content information, contact information that we will need from you, uh, and then if there's anything else that um, folks may need to know in regards to the second step application process, Katie. Yeah, so the application... Um, on our website, so when you when you go to our website and you click to take it, it's a pretty basic application, um, asking some your name, your email, why you're applying, and then I'll follow up with that uh, survey that I mentioned. Actually, the one that assesses where your business is at, and um, that is a more in depth uh, survey. We call it the business growth ladder or BGL, and it's a ladder because people can sort of move up it and down it. Um, and, uh, we don't share any of this information with other people. It's just for us. Uh, we actually developed this very complicated survey that actually there's numbers attached to different answers that, that develops a number, which creates a range, which tells us where a business is at in its growth stage. It took us years to develop, and that's the tool that you're actually engaging with. And, um, I also can see the exact, the, the answers themselves too on the, on the back end. And what this is doing is telling me about 
because you might have been in business for three years, but it's telling me about the sophistication of your business. So how much revenue do you have? Do you have any employees? We ask things like, do, do you have business insurance? Um, do you have a website? Does that website have quality photography? And we're we're not trying to be annoying. We're really trying to like, it's that whole looking under the hood thing that I was talking about. That's what that survey is doing. And that's a part of the application because we're trying to create a cohort of businesses in a similar place. And that's the tool that's gonna help me understand that the businesses are in a similar place. Um, yeah, I think that that covers that. Yes, so we're coming down to the end of the, the, of the info session. But in summary, just, you know, the main thing is the application deadline is May 1st. So send your application in by 11.59 p.m. Remember that there is a two-step two process. So you need to be, you need to complete the basic application one and then make it, and then make sure that, you know, that Kitty can send you the link to submit the second one. So make sure that you're looking at time for that too. Um, um, so I think, you know, don't send the first basic application at 1159 on, on Monday, May 1st, so that if you have any questions, Katie is your to-go person to, um, you know, for eligibility, priority, um, you know, understand whether you, this is the right fit for you. Uh, thinking about ahead about, you know, if you are really interested, if you are already, maybe you already sent your application and you really want to be considered for this program, timing is everything here correct and uh, making sure that you take a look at the dates you know making sure that you will be able to participate um you know the uh, the zoom lectures are required uh, and also orientation and the final presentation uh and the entrepreneur meetups are just you know an extra added plus where you get to work with another experience with an experienced entrepreneur that can help you share you know you know jess will share best practices lessons learned all you know, just from from her own experience as well, and also our coaches. Um, so I think timing is, is really the biggest um, the biggest thing that I want to make sure that you walk away with, you know, understanding the date. Um, and uh, and yeah, and you know, just if you have any questions, just let us know. 